good evening. I'd like to call the Gautier City Council meeting to order tonight, Tuesday, January 17, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Please silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Um, the prayer will be by our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson, and our Pledge of Allegiance will be by Councilman at Large, Adam College. Please stand. Father, we bow before you tonight. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for your blessings, God. We, uh, we ask that you uh, continue to keep your hedge of protection around us, God. We ask for wisdom, God, tonight in this meeting and unity as we conduct city business. And Lord, we most of all thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice for us on Calvary's cross. And we ask all of this in his name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman College, and thank you, Mr. Ankerson. That brings us to agenda or uh, order approval. Do we have any changes, Ms. Shancy? Yes, the minute are we gonna announce that so she reposted the agenda so it's not okay it's not okay do we have a motion to approve the agenda order of approval so moved. motion by councilman college a second by councilman jackson any discussion all in favor motion carries who do we have on the phone um Ms. Jancy, do you know is anybody on the phone? Okay. That brings us to our announcements by our city manager, Ms. Jancy. The Gushay Men's Club annual Mardi Gras parade will be February the 11th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Jancy. That brings us to our presentation agenda, um, the Gushay School Choice Proclamation. Is anybody here to receive the proclamation? Do y'all have the proclamation for me? Miss Montgomery? Miss? Nobody? City of Goche Proclamation, a proclamation commemorating Goche School Choice Week, whereas the City of Goche recognizes the important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students in Goche to be successful adults. And whereas our area is home to a multitude of excellent education options from which parents can choose for their children. And whereas educational variety not only helps to diversify our economy, but also enhances the vibrance of our community. And whereas the city of Goche has many high quality teaching professionals in all types of school settings who are committed to educating our children. And whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective educational options. Now, therefore, we, Mayor Casey Vaughn and Council of the City of Goche do hereby recognize January the 22nd through January the 28th, 2023 as Goche School Choice Week in the City of Goche, Mississippi, and all this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. Mayor Casey Vaughn, City of Goche, Mississippi. And we're blessed in Goche to have not only public schools, but private schools. We have a wonderful superintendent <coughs> in both of the systems. Um, and we also have wonderful principals, counselors, nurses, um, everything down to the custodial staff does a phenomenal job in our school district. We are in Goche, ranked and made history um, with our football team. Our band has been succeeding and so is our other sports. So I encourage you to support all of our educational efforts here in Goche. That brings us to our business agenda. Business agenda item number one, consider a request for a 21 
foot variance to secondary front yard setback requirements for an accessory building and a 1,211 and one and a half square foot variance to total lot coverage in a R1 low density single family residential zoning district located at 1600 Pat Drive, Gautier, Mississippi, GPC number 23-01-VIR by our planning director, Mr. Scott Anderson. Anderson. Do we have any public comments on <coughs> business agenda item number one only? Any public comments? None. Do we have a motion by council to consider the request for a 21 foot variance to the secondary front yard setback requirements for an accessory building and an 1,211 one half square foot variance to a total lot coverage in the R1 low density single family residential zoning district located at 1600 Pat Drive, Gotcha, Mississippi, GPC number 23-01-VARPID number 8711032100. So moved. Got a motion by Councilman Gallat. Do we have a second? Yeah, yeah. Just one clarification, Mayor. But is that, are you moving to approve the Planning Commission's recommendation or the application? What I'm doing is making a motion to open this for discussion. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Councilman College seconds. Any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? I have no discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? Yes, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, based on Planning Commission's recommendation, by reducing the, the variance, uh, lot, the setback variance uh, to, I guess, 11 feet, but it would, uh, 11 feet from the street. Uh, the square footage overage, is that based on the carport or is that additional structure on there? 
I believe he had agreed to reduce the size of the carport, but I'll let him explain. So. Okay. Good evening, Council. Augusta Stanton, 1600 Bath Drive. <clears throat> um, the Planning Commission and I discussed it, and we originally were asking to be able, because uh, just to give you perspective, our property line runs 11 feet onto into our yard from the curb. I was asking to be able to build four foot inside the yard from that line. After discussion with the Planning Commission, we agreed to start the carport at 14 foot from the property line. Okay, property line, which yes. Which give us still enough room to park one car with adequate coverage in my driveway is four cars wide, so we were more than happy to agree to that. Okay, let's see. So they, so they, Build a carport addition. So that's the only structure you're putting on is that carport, or is there? No, sir. The, we were adding on to our existing uh, detached garage. Detached garage. Okay. Uh, Twelve by thirty-six foot. <coughs> Yeah, and on 12 by 36 to our existing detached garage and then the carport in front of that. Gotcha. Okay. I just, uh, I know we ha we heard a, a similar case uh, last year with a gentleman that wanted to add on to the back of the house and there were some options as far as trying to attach the touch structure to the primary structure and he ended up withdrawing it because uh, it didn't look like it was going to go uh, that route. But okay, that's the only questions I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Gallant. Mr. Stamp, the addition you're going to add on to the existing garage, which is going to be how far from the property line between you and Miss Ingram? Okay. There, um, between myself and Miss Ingram, we already have a existing uh, exposed driveway that was previously used for RV parking. All we're doing is basically enclosing that portion of the driveway. We won't encroach on the missing or any further than that driveway already does. Yeah. Is she aware that you're going to be putting an additional shed up there? I'm, I never had a direct conversation with her, no, but I never see her to speak with her. I work nights and sleep days. <coughs> you say you're going to be parking seven cars there. Are you running a business out of your house? No, sir. Just Are you a car collector? I, I apparently have become one, yes. You have what? I have apparently become a car collector, yes, sir. So you have seven cars that you're going to put within this carport or on your driveway? No, sir. I have, uh, I'm planning to park four inside. I, have, I can currently park two inside the garage. With the addition, I'll be able to park two additional vehicles. And then, you, and then, of course, I have tools and equipment that I have currently in storage that I'd like to bring home, which would accommodate that additional on the addition on the garage. Well, I'm confused about when I say you're going to add on and then you're going to add tools and equipment. I'm just wondering if you're running a business out of the no, I just, without my lifetime, I've worked on cars for a good portion of that life. And I just don't have the heart to let go of anything. Has anybody complained about the amount of lights you got running around your house? You've lit up the whole neighborhood. Like Rankin County Correctional, yes, sir. At <laughs> what? Like Rankin County Correctional. <laughs> yes, sir, I did. Yeah, well, that's all I have, but uh, it's. It just seems like, you know, we we gave you approval to cut down a magnolia tree. Yes, sir. And, and, I was an, oak, and an oak tree. Yes, sir. And then you went in there and trimmed all the ones on the corner. You, bought, you busted some big limbs out of those, which I think was not in accordance with the UDO. I haven't I asked the planning commission or director to go by and look at it, and I don't know if they ever did. Where you cut them big limbs off of that one oak tree there on the corner. It was my understanding that if I trim the tree back, I wanted to trim it away from the driveway, which yeah. was my intention. But you whack some pretty big limbs off of it. Yeah. And then you lit up the neighborhood. 
That's all I got to say. Is that what you talking about? No, that ain't it. That's okay. not. Keep going this way. Okay. Look at that one right there where he whacked it off. Okay. I got you. I got it. I'm on Google. That's why I'm <laughs> I'm done. Thank you, Councilman Gallat. Councilman Jackson? Uh, yes. So, um, what is the, um, like, if you add on, because it looked like you're going to add on over this driveway and you're going to pretty much close up, close in this driveway right here? Mm -hmm. Like here where this garbage can is? I'm just right, trying. he's going to put a shed there. On and a shed. He's going to add a carport coming out. Right. How far from the existing building is that going to be coming out? For the carport? Yeah. It'll be approximately 20 feet from the existing uh, the, garage. the roof line. Attached garage, approximately 20 feet. Yeah. And go all the way across this area plus all of this. From there? To his new addition, right? Yes, sir. All the way across the driveway. Yes, sir. So it's not going. It's not going to go to this fence where this fence is. No, no it's going to stop to go over to the right that end of that corner, that slab. All right. So we're not. We, we're approving that he's able to, like, uh, for us. We, he's got the footage he needs from the house to house. Am I correct? He's got the proper needs. Councilman, the, the rear setback requirement is five feet for accessory structure, so he would have to be five foot from his property line with the addition. And he got that. He pretty much got that. Am I correct? Yes, sir. He's not asking for a rear, so I'm assuming. I, I hope. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, when, since he mentioned the neighbors, Councilman I just didn't want any issues there. Councilman right. Jackson, here's where it, the diagram He's got it. Yeah, I, I got okay. the action picture. Action picture. Explain it to him on a picture. All right. right. On Zoom. Okay. Uh, I have no other questions. I'm just making sure we, we make nobody mad. Huh? Councilman Nothing. George. I think I've covered it all. <laughs> Thank you. I do have one follow-up question. Okay, go ahead, Councilor. Uh, what's the required, Mr. Anderson, what's the required notification for uh, this type of uh, application? Is it just adjoining, just adjoining property owners? Okay. Which means it's just Miss Ingram, right? <laughs> and the house behind it. Yeah. Two, two, okay. Two Both of them, and neither one of them no, said no. anything about it. We had no calls and letters, and nobody attended yeah. uh, opposition to the planning. <coughs> this is all going to be a flat aluminum carport. The carport structure. will be a vertical style carport, basically just a roof and uh, holes supporting the roof. It'll be a flat. It'll have, it'll be a drop a drop style where it'll, where it'll, the, the height will begin at the. Uh, Got the attached garage and drop to the street approximately four inches. Four inches. Okay. Yes. Just for water problem. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, before we move, I, I just wanted to get a, a clarification. We have a right. I'm going to bring that up. We I read what was on the agenda, but the planning commission's recommending something else. So, are we going to change the motion to reflect the planning commission, or are we leaving it as the original motion? I'll make a motion that we accept. Amend. amend. Well, I'll open for discussion, but I'll amend that discussion that we accept. The Planning Commission recommendations. Councilman Glott has made a motion to accept the Planning Commission's recommendations to amend his motion. That would be change it to 11 um, foot variance to secondary front yard setback and a 851.5 square foot variance to total lot coverage. Um, do we have a second on the amendment? Second. Have a second by Councilman George. Any discussions on the amendment? All in favor? Motion carries. Okay. Now we have to vote on the. I don't uh, vote. Are you? Did you abstain? No. Okay. Are you voting against? Yeah. Okay. One opposed. Then we have the original motion. We had a motion by Councilman Gallat, a second by Councilman College. All in favor? All, 
Well, you know, we have this is really this is, this is, this is the original motion, which is, has been amended just to discuss what planning commission right. approved. So it's been amended. So now what we're what you're voting on is whether or not to approve what planning commission recommended. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All in favor? We all should be doing this one. No, we, this is, we already voted on the amendment. This is That's the original it. motion that has the uh, old 21 foot variance. This is as amended. This is as amended. amended. So, with the amendment. Yes, amend his original motion. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Are y'all, okay, so all in favor? This is the motion with the amendment. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yes, I'm that in is favor right. following the planning commission. Okay. Who's opposed? And what about you, Councilman? I'm opposed. So, two opposed. Miss Dickerson, you got that? Okay. So, we had we had original motion by Councilman Galat. It lost me. The second by Councilman Jort um, College. That was um, Vaughn, George, Jackson. Anderson and Elbin in favor, Galat and College against. The amendment was by Councilman George, a second by, That's not right. no, I mean, no, no, no. the amendment by Galat, second by George and Adam opposed. Adam opposed. And Galat was in favor. Now, we're going on to the next. Confused. Business uh -huh. agenda number two, resolution directing the placement of liens on properties located in Goche, Mississippi for fees and charges incurred by the city of Goche to abate the unsafe conditions of vacant structures pursuant to the Mississippi Code section 21-19-11 by Mr. Scott Ankerson, our planner, planning director. Uh, the work has been performed at 3000 Ladner Road. The costs were associated with the previous order that y'all approved for cleaning. Uh, this is the tire net, as we all know. So the tires have all been removed, and this is just uh, y'all's uh, approval to allow us to put it as a thing on the property. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments on business agenda item number two? Any public comments? None? Do we have a motion by council to approve the resolution directing the placement of the liens on properties located in Goche for fees and charges incurred by the city of Goche to abate the unsafe conditions of vacant structures? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Second. Second by Rest Councilman Anderson. Any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? No, dis no comments. Councilman Gillot? No discussion. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? No comment. I just want to thank um, you and your department, Mr. Ankerson, um, and Code Enforcement, um, all of you, for your diligence in trying to clean up our city because it does, it is a selling tool. The cleaner and fresher we look, it does attract development. If it's got the lighted property next to it, it won't sell and the people will go right on to a sister city and we don't want that happening. So thank y'all again. We have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman Anderson, all in favor? Motion carries, Ms. Dickerson. Business agenda item number three, approval of the docket of claims. They have been um, submitted to us digitally. Also, they've been on the city website for the general public by our um, city clerk, Ms. Montgomery, and our deputy clerk, Ms. Dickerson. So do we have a motion to approve the docket of claim? Any public comments on the docket of claims? No public comments. Do we have a motion to approve the docket of claims? Make a motion we approve the docket of claims provided that all entries are on a true, correct, properly entered, and not fraudulent. We have a motion by Councilman College. We have a second. Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion <coughs> starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? No comments. Councilman Gallat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No. <coughs> Councilman George? No comment. All in favor? 
Motion carries. That brings us to our consent agenda item. Num um, we approve all of them in one motion unless somebody wants to pull one. Um, that's <coughs> one approval of minutes from the regular council meeting held January the 3rd, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Two, receive November and December 2022 privilege license report. Three, approval of water and sewer adjustments of January 2023 in the amount of $16,873.27. Four, authorization to remove office equipment and furniture from the city of Goche's inventory. Five, resolution approving the sponsorship of the Goche Men's Club Annual Mardi Gras Parade to be held on Saturday, February the 11th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Six, resolution approving closure of roads and traffic control measures as described in the special event permit application submitted by the Goche Men's Club for their annual Mardi Gras Parade on February 11th, 2023. Seven, approval of a letter of support for Mississippi Songwriters Alliance's legislative funding request. Eight, approval of change order number one to increase the contract days with JLB contractors for the Goshe Van Cleave Road Waste Water Sewer Upgrades, Go Mesa. Does anybody want to pull one? I just want to pull only because the members are here and we should recognize them. I would like to pull number five. So do we have a motion to approve one through four and six through eight? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Anderson. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to consent agenda item number five. I just felt like we should pull it so we could recognize the men's club here that are here this evening. We have Mr. Bob White, the president. We have Mr. Bill Watley, who is a past president. Probably every board member he's been with the men's club. Um, but y'all do a great job giving back to the community and partnering with us and we wanna thank y'all for continuing to invest and host um, the Mardi Gras Parade. Um, and if Samuel could hold up the um, nice flyer, we've only had a nice flyer about many years ago. So this is um, great to compete with that flyer that y'all had that year um, to promote that we have a wonderful small town parade, night parade here in Goche, Mississippi, and we want to encourage everybody. Um, the city's here to assist y'all if we can, um, and we will have our small block party like we had last year um, down on the city um, things where we will have some live music with a sponsor when the sponsor comes forward. Um, we will make that announcement along with food trucks, et cetera, to partner with you all to get attendees to the parade to um, have them to come tailgate. So we are gonna partner with you all again and host more activities down there to promote our beautiful city. So we thank you all for that. Does anybody else wanna say anything to the men's club? We look forward to the parade. Thank you. Laissez le bon temps relais. So, do we have a motion to approve the resolution, the sponsorship of the Goche Men's Club Annual Mardi Gras Parade, to be held on February the 11th, 2023, at 7 p.m.? So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Anderson. Second. Second by Councilman Elvin. All in favor? <coughs> motion carries. That brings us to our study agenda. Um, number one is discuss citizen comments. You can um, come to our podium right here. Um, state your name, address, and you have three minutes um, to speak. No citizen comments? Okay. That brings us to our council comments. It's the second meeting of the month. So we will start with Councilman Elvin. Yes, uh, Councilman Jackson brought up the issues of speed bumps 
last meeting. Do we even have portable speed bumps that we can put out in areas that have high volume of calls for reckless drivers or careless or high volume of complaints for speed? We have the, I don't know, just a couple. So what would be the process if a, a community wanted to request those? Would they have to get a, a, an approval? I would really need to submit that request to Ramona. Um, like I said, we only have, I think, two. Right? And we were also going to have one more question. I mean, we, uh, we also put down these, what do they call those struggle strips? Yeah, uh, recently we had that child hit up there in the Hickory Hills area waiting for a school bus and uh, we got an influx of phone calls in reference to speed bumps and traffic control. I'm just, I didn't know what to tell them as far as requesting that type of equipment from the city. Well, the last time, just uh, last time we put some temporary speed bumps when they were doing, when they were doing the bridge up there, mm -hmm. uh, we actually did council approval to uh, approve putting the speed bumps on those uh, secondary streets that were used as a detour while that bridge was under construction. Uh, which was short-lived because while the first week everybody loved the speed bumps and by the second week everybody that has a low rider or uh, lived on the street people were tearing in between the two speed bumps and so forth so uh, while initially for a week they were very much appreciated thereafter I got nothing but complaints but I'm more welcome to give it another try. Well you yeah, know in a lot of what just happened I think we've had an increase for requests for that type of tool. Yeah, so. I think, Ms. Shancy, can you get Chief Bevers to give an update on that incident? Because there's two sides to it, every story. Um, he can email us that, Ms. Shancy, if you don't mind. Um, thanks to all the employees of the city. We couldn't do it without you. Clear water, waste pro. Thanks for all you do. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Elvin. Councilman yes. Anderson? I'd like to thank Clearwater Solutions for cleaning the sidewalk on the Coach A. Van Cleve Road, which was being encroached by the, the hill of dirt and the land to the, to the east side of it. They come along there and cleaned it and got it real nice. Now you can ride your bike or wheelchairs or whatever without running off into the road itself because the sidewalk is attached right directly to the side of the road. But thank y'all for getting that clean, Russell, appreciate it. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was, um, I, I talked with Scott, planning director earlier, about the, the diuretic car wash on Ladner Road next to our $3 million park that we've just upgraded. I say $3 million because it's probably worth that now after we put 2.1 or two into it. Uh, but there's a car wash there that's been unused and it's, it's been nothing but trouble for I know 20 plus years and it, it, it's I stopped there to, today and, and looked at that and yesterday and it's just pitiful looking next to our new park it just drags down the whole appearance of the Ladner Road area I've asked Scott let's take a look and see what it's going to take let's get that thing done away with tore down or whatever it, it's really pitiful looking I know it, I, I, it seems like it's been there 20 plus years unused, other than people doing drugs and fighting and different things going on there at that corner. We've tried to reach out, Councilman Anderson, to the owner to see if they were willing to donate it to the city for extra parking for Baco Park. So maybe we will um, hear back from them also on that request. Okay, whatever it takes. Yeah. Because the parking is, if you've been down there, like at opening ceremonies, <laughs> Chastity, um, everybody that was down there, um, people were literally parking on side of the road. Um, fire trucks couldn't get down um, Webb Road if they had to get out of there. It was so many people utilizing that. That'd be a good idea. Uh -uh. Serve a lot more yeah, purpose it would than be, what it's looking at like right, right now. It would be a major benefit. Same thing with that um, belighted. Um, laundry mat. That yeah, piece yeah. of property would be yeah, good for be, parking. That could be, yeah. Of course, they'd have to cross that road, but that could be a crosswalk mm -hmm. put there in a mark. Yeah. Um, other than that, thank everyone. Like Councilman Elvin said, that's all. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. Councilman College.
Uh, yeah, just a couple of items, just for clarification on the consent agenda for the change order for the additional time. Uh, if you didn't look at the agenda, uh, the reason for that extension is due to material delays, specifically air release valves, some ductile iron spools, air release valve hatch covers, HDP adapters, and HDP pipe. So it's not for a monetary amount, it's just for a calendar day extension. Um, second item, uh, as far as the speed bumps that uh, Councilman uh, Alvin and Jackson have mentioned, I'm all in favor of putting the temporary speed bumps uh, to see how uh, the residents in that area respond to them. Um, like I said, uh, thought it was a great idea when we did it with the bridge project and it quickly turned into a, a bigger fiasco than a benefit. Uh, but I'm, I'm always willing to give it another shot and see uh, other areas of the city may be more appreciative towards them. Uh, third on uh, the Men's Club Mardi Gras Parade, uh, we do have some street lights that are out on the very east side of Dolphin. We can try, I know they're a headache and trying to get them working. It looks like it's on a circuit. And if we could, we have those floodlights that are supposed to shine up around our fountain onto the sculpture and that vegetation has grown up pretty good. If we can just cut out the vegetation around those floodlights to try to, you know, better uh, make our sculpture and all that a little bit more visible, especially during the parade. Uh, you know, that's a key feature to the city with the roundabout and it's great to show it off, especially at nighttime. Uh, but other than that, that's all the comments I have. Thank, Thank you. you, Councilman College. <laughs> Councilman Gallant. When y'all speak of speed bumps, when, what Clearwater has, you just got these rubber strips that you put down. Mm -hmm. Temporary raised. The black rubber. Yeah. yeah. With the yellow. Had a raise at least four to six inches. Like the college. <laughs> the college is permanent. Yeah, but these are about the same size, but they're not, as, they're not as wide as they're three foot wide or more, five foot wide. Well, they still are pretty well, high. I'm all for them, but them strips that y'all put down, and, them lasted about a week in my neighborhood. And they were all over the place. I went out there and pulled them up because they were going in people's yards. So they didn't slow down. No, it wasn't me. They just didn't it here, right? You can't you can't speed in Sea Cliff anymore with the built-in speed on the streets. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Councilman White anyway, that said that would be a joke. I was just concerned about what size, if you're going to put down speed bumps, how high are they going to be? I don't think they were. I know I was just on uh, Pensacola Beach this morning, and they got some pretty good permanent speed bumps down through 98 down there on the beach side. You better be doing 20 or 25 or you're gonna lose a front end. These temporary ones, you better be going five miles an hour or else you're gonna lose a front end. That's <laughs> what I, I, cause I remember the last week when I was at questioning about speed bumps. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Delight, and welcome back to Nature's Playground. <laughs> Councilman Jackson. I'm yeah. a traveling man. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, since we address, I'm be, I try to be brief. You know, the, the, there are other options of speed bump. We don't have to have, you know, one that's raised too high, but there are other options because I've seen many other options from different, going to different cities. Um, it, it's best we definitely do a test run, but at the same time, we need something that's permanent uh, because yeah. the community is, you know, they, they're coming to me, they're saying, hey, we need something done. The children are uh, at risk, as you see, a child got hit. So, I mean, it's just a, a multitude of things that can happen um, if we don't do something about it. You know, we just, um, I think it's just, you know, if they, if they got a low rider car, they know to slow it down and, it, you know, and go over the bump where it won't tap the bottom of the car. Um, well, something else I was going to address. Oh, yeah, I got the, um, Crime Stoppers, they want to put signs up on, on Baycock on if we got the sign bar all way, already up, certain um, signs that we already got the sign bar up. I guess they add, want to add it to it. So they want to do that if uh, if that's possible to be done. And I was going to... Do they want to do it themselves or they want us? Well, they want us to do it because I, I, I don't know why they said they couldn't do it, but he was here just earlier in the, uh, for the meeting. I think you need to get those to... 
That's that's what yes. I that's what I was I told them. I believe we spoke to them before mm -hmm. and we were waiting for them to bring us the signs. Right. They got some signs coming, so but I, I, I did the same thing. I said, y'all talk to Miss Bilbo. Yeah. And I believe that's all I got. Everybody have a great day. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Councilman George? Uh, this past week, uh, several of us went to Jackson for Mississippi Municipal League. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a little college for elected officials in the state of Mississippi to go prolong their education on how municipalities work and how they should work. Um, we also take this time to meet with legislators to discuss projects that we're doing in Goshe, uh, to acquire funding and support uh, from Jackson. And we had several meetings and they were all positive meetings. Uh, we have a lot of projects that are already started, so I feel like that's going to give us the push to get what we need for the rest of it. Um, along with new cool projects that April and Paula and everybody's working on that uh, some real exciting times coming up. But it was just a really, really good, positive time in Jackson. I'm real happy about it. I think that uh, we had Adam, Casey, Gordon, and myself up there, and Paula, uh, and Josh, our attorney. So it was a good team. Um, other than that, I think these chairs could use some WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> squeaking and rocking. Whoever, Scott, you want to handle that? <laughs> Just squeak. A little distracting. <laughs> squeak for a bigger guy sitting I know. There. I'm probably over the weight limit. Anyways, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman George. Um, you know, I echo what all of our councilmen are saying. It is, um, the speeding is out of control in residential areas. Um, but as we've heard from the residents and as we heard from Councilman Glott, the, if you're going to speed, those rumble strips are not going to stop you because they don't care about their vehicle. Um, sort of like the three inch ones, they're going to tear their vehicles up, they're not going to care if they're down or not. Um, however, I do want, with that being said, um, have we notified and checked with the insurance carrier? to see how this is going to work when we have claims. Can we ask them so we have something in writing how the process works? I just want to so when I put get the first... You put signage up like yeah. we did before and you put the rumble strips or feed bumps down. It's on the person who runs over but I think That's I, all we have to do. But I think we had a rumble strip that was up and not all the way down right, and we had an insurance claim, if I remember. Or they called me and I told them to come file. It doesn't mean it was paid. Right. But, I mean, it's not that citizen's fault that they hit the rumble strip that's half up and damaged their car. So I just want us to have it in place so when I get the first citizen complaint, of a tire or a under I end. think the rumble strips are useless. We know how they, they work. Mayor, may I say something uh -huh. when you're talking about that? I think some stiff fines written by our police department, I mean some stiff fines. If you're 10 miles over the speed limit and on a little C street that's 20 miles an hour or above, stiff fines, I think, and, and it, could we advertise those people that speed? Yeah, but it's hard to catch them is the problem. It's, in the, it's inside the neighborhood. You're not going to catch everybody every day, but you can catch them in this area and catch them in that area. Stake areas out at different times, at different days. And I think after about 100 or so, and you advertise them, you know, and, and a stiff enough fine, I think people might get the message. Well, I do think um, Chief Bever does have a plan to use the motorcycles in residential areas to try to help with that, don't you, Chief Bever? Yes, sir. Okay, so I think that is his plan, Councilman Anderson, to do that. I think so that'll wake some people up. That'll wake some people up when they get their two mile over speed limit in residential areas since we got so many complaints. I disagree. They um, don't speed in them neighborhoods. So I just want to um, echo that, just make sure we have a thing in place when we have the complaints coming in on the speed bumps <laughs> damage. Um, also, I just want to thank our city manager, our city attorney uh, for 
organizing and <laughs> the staff who put together the MML legislative priorities for us to go to Jackson um, and all the people who are um, sponsored our dinner, our engineering firms, um, and our city attorney and our city manager. You know, we are very thankful for all of y'all. And we did do, and we were very successful in Jackson, I feel. And um, coming home from there, having the support of our local delegation really feels good when you can sit down and talk to them and you really get their support on your projects means a lot. So um, as we heard when we were there, we will be going back to Jackson um, so they know we are alive in Goche, Mississippi, and we definitely need our projects. So um, thank all of you for that. Also, I want to um, thank our police department and our fire department. Yesterday, um, we, if you did not see on social media or on the funeral home um, website, we lost one of our former police officers, um, Mr. John Burks. I ask that you keep his wife, his two boys, his sister, his brother-in-law, nieces, um, and your prayers over the coming weeks. Um, but that was a very touching um, service and also a procession from Heritage all the way to Crestline. Um, it was led by um, public safety and our fire department um, got out on the highway to have condolences also. So I thank both departments for that and it was noticed um, even our antique police car um, made social media. Hopefully that antique police car is on its last leg, Chief Pepper, because it literally is, the paint's cracking and it looks rough. So I'll be glad when our back-ordered police cars get here. Oh, people notice that, man. Say, so, hey, look at what we got, an antique. We're the only one that had an antique, but it'll be gone soon. But Chief Bever, thank you for working to get those new um, cars that you have in your budget. I know they'll be ever delighted to get them. Um, it just shows that we take care of our vehicles here. That's true. That's, right. That's true. We utilize every bit of them. Um, also, I just want to remind everybody about economic development. It's about, um, and thanks, Sam. Um, for all your positivity on our social media, um, getting everything out there in a positive way, fastly on the app. When I was in Jackson, I heard um, other local cities saying, who does y'all's app? We're trying to get one like y'all. And Ms. Jancy was with me when we heard that from our other um, cities across the state. So it's recognized what we're doing and um, that's kudos to all y'all for making that happen um, to be able to hear the positive about our city when we're in Jackson. Um, also our little pastry shop, I encourage you to continue to support them but they are thriving down there. They've widened their um, selection to even making cakes and king cakes and um, they are opened an extra day during the week. They were closed two days but now they're opening again. Um, so go down there and continue to support all of our small businesses um, because they are what keeps our city going. Um, all of our small restaurants, our boutiques, our local pharmacy, um, all of them we're thankful and blessed here. We also have something else. Oh, Clearwater, uh, did they, did Russell leave Ramona? Yeah, it's right there, um, it's April. Can we it's get the back. street sweeper, and I know um, the rocks at every intersection and also the Singing River Bridge, um, West River, if we can just get the street sweeper on it and get it cleaned up, it's got loose gravel, loose stuff, and hopefully the grass will overtake those rocks sooner than later. Um, but thank y'all for doing that. Also thank um, Waste Pro. Yesterday was a holiday for us, except for our public safety and our public works, and also um, 
Waste Pro. Waste Pro was out working yesterday, so thank them, um, and I will relay that to them. With that being said, I think that's all we have. Remember to share our city Facebook post um, to get it out to everybody. The more shares, the more traction we get so the citizens know what's going on. Also, um, Chastia still needs some volunteers. Correct. For baseball. For baseball and softball. So if you feel the need um, to volunteer for our youth and our community, I encourage you to do that. Mr. Stubbs, we hope you won your bowling tournament and welcome back home. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Ms. College and Mr. College back there for coming. Thank all of our citizens for coming into the meeting and also thank the ones that are watching us on social media live so you can go out and share the positive story and not the rumors because we are alive and being very successful here in GoCheck. Also, if you got anybody interested in economic development, we do have some I-10 corridor properties listed for sale, and I encourage you to reach out to our city manager. We do have some tax incentives. So our I-10 corridor is available and on the market. So come to GoCheck. You got some I-10 frontage out there. That's all I have. I'll let our city manager now um, city attorney, Mr. Dennis, yes, our city judge, she don't have anything because she's doing a great job across the street. Um, does any directors have anything? Chief Latch, Chief Bevan, Ms. Morgan, Ms. Stennett, you want to talk? Mayor's Youth Council is getting ready to go to Oxford, Mississippi for the Youth Leadership Summit, and I know we'll have a great time in Oxford with our youth, so um, we look forward to that. Okay. Do we have a motion to recess until January 17th, 20... Oh, uh, that ain't right. February the 7th at 6.30 p.m. Summit. Second. Motion by Councilman George, a second by Councilman Jackson. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. We're recessed.